everybody has bad days. Like it just, you know, they say shake it off or whatever when you're playing sports or whatever it is in life, just shake it off. It's going to be okay. But you just make mistakes. You know, I had a couple times where I just did something stupid. Usually it was something very dumb. Middle of the night during selection one time. I So back then, it was before I had LASIK eye surgery, so my vision was not great. So, And they don't let you wear contacts when you're in training. You got to wear these, you know, uh, glasses. And they're like, they make, they're goofy looking, but they make some uh, almost like flight looking glasses that are like rubber and they're better for you know, when you're out in the woods and you're sweating like crazy and all that. So they woke us up or they, they had us line up in formation late at night, one night, it was 10, 11 PM. And we've been out there for a week or so already. And we've got these big two, two, uh, court canteens that we're drinking water out of trying to hydrate. Cause they're, they're telling us we're going to go on this long run or ruck march or something. And so we're all trying to hydrate. And then all of a sudden, you know, things change fast around there. They change their mind and mess with you. Also, they come out, they're like, all right, this event has been canceled. You know, go back to your bunks. We'll notify you when the next thing is happening or whatever. So we all go back to the bunks, you know, go to sleep. And then I wake up a couple hours later, just having to pee so bad. Like I couldn't, it was just like, oh my gosh, I can't find my headlamp. I can't find my glasses. I can't see anything. Like I said, my vision was sucked. Can't see anything. I like come out of the backside of the hooch. And I can't figure out which way the bathrooms are. And I'm like about to burst. And you're, you know, obviously we're, I mean, we're out there, we're on base, but we're in these tents. You're supposed to like, you got to go to the bathroom in the bathrooms. You know, you can't, they, they say it before you go in there too. Like, don't you dare come out of the tents and just piss on the rocks, you know, over <laughs> here because it's going to start smelling. It's gross. But I was about to, I couldn't help it. So I like tucked behind a, a building and just went. And not realizing there was a cadre member like right near me that I just couldn't see and just watching me. And he just walks up to me and he's like, candidate, what is your roster number? And I was like, 32, you know, and he wakes up the entire class, gets them all in formation, stands me in front of them, you know, and says like, this guy is a definition of a shit bag and blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, ah, I wish I could just explain myself. I promise I'm not, but you're right. I did the wrong thing. Like I did. I screwed up. There was nothing I could say. I just had to stand there and take it. <laughs> and like the next day they did peer evaluation. So I, of course I got a bunch of negative peer reports because people were just like, well, that guy sucks. Cause. <laughs> um, and so like, I kind of knew at that point, like I need to really perform in these next two weeks for the rest of selection, or I'm going to get cut because they evaluate everything. They're looking at all this data. So I did everything I could. I, I went as hard as I could on all the ruck marches and the runs and the nat land nav. And I was finishing like first or second in pretty much everything. So I knew I had that going for me, but you know, they brought me in their office and they're like, Hey, just being a PT stud doesn't get you out of all this. You know, it doesn't mean that that's not everything. I'm like, I completely understand. You don't understand how much I wish I could change what happened. I just, it was like, I tried to explain the situation. I was like, this is what happened, you know, and I was wrong. You're right. But this is why this is, this is why this occurred. So it was either piss myself, piss the, in the barracks, you know, which is not an answer. Or this was the best solution that I could come up with because I just couldn't, I couldn't see anything. I didn't know where I, my bearings were all messed up. I was tired. I don't know if they forgave me, but I made it through, you know, selection <laughs> and on to the next, uh, on to the next phase. But it was a lesson learned. You know, I'm glad those things happened as scary as they are because they, they definitely do teach you something. But I had a few moments like that in different, different ways where it was like it's just something stupid just a stupid nate thing just being you know <laughs> trying to thinking they can get away with, with whatever and always getting caught i don't know about you but like for myself i would it would bother me where like it's like eating at me like oh my there was nothing i could do i can't explain myself and now you know but i have to perform and yeah. how do you like did it was it something that was constantly like replaying in the back of your mind did you beat yourself up or were you like you know what i just gotta do what i have to do and if i get cut i get cut well i beat myself up but i beat myself up um on the trail you know okay a at which meant i just was like i pushed myself even harder it was just motivation to like this now you have no excuse you have no reason you have to be 
first at everything. You've got to be the best. And I think that they noticed that too. They noticed that effort. And I'm sure they were like, oh, that's the rock pisser guy. But <laughs> at least he's like, you know, he didn't shut it down and quit. He's like going balls to the wall because he's he knows he's up against it right now. He's on the ropes. Yeah, I mean, that was it. That was like, that's the way you react. It's the way you have to react. It doesn't mean you're, you're just going to be like, oh, forget about it. It's in the past. Like, no, it's hard to do that. It's hard to forget about that. But you, so you can't really control it coming back into your brain, but you can control what you're doing. You can control the actions, then the reactions and all that stuff. You can control that. You just got to do it. You know, you just have to do it. There's no other way to explain it. You just like, all right, this is, this has occurred. It's not going away. You can't change it. It happened. It's dumb. Yeah. But it also is a matter. It matters because details matter. And, you know, all those lessons, all these little things that reasons they have you do stuff in the military is for something bigger, you know, when lives are at stake so that you, you don't get complacent and lazy and you've got a plan. You've got, you, you, you know, believe you better believe the rest of the time there. I like pinned my headlamp to the bunk above me in the Springs and my glasses right next to it. So if I woke up in the night, I knew exactly where they were. And it's like, that's a huge lesson, you know, for anything. I just didn't, I wasn't, I, I didn't have to do that before the military. I didn't think about those things, but now it's, it's like, you had to be ready to go and have your shit together and know where everything is and be organized. So it's like, I got to be grateful for this st stupid thing, you know, <laughs> because it was embarrassing and it almost cost me a green beret, honestly. But because it happened, it taught me a huge lesson. And I'm grateful for the cadre that didn't cut me, you know, that yeah. it gave me a lot of shit. They definitely didn't let it go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wouldn't either if I was cadre. I would have kept bringing it up, man, and just yeah. been like, oh, you're that guy. Okay. You know? <laughs> but uh, yeah.